Hello and welcome to the Sanctuary of Light and the Light Institute of Galisteo Sunday Meditation. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, we divide our meditation into three points, into three parts, so that we can touch energies that really help us to connect on the highest level because meditation is about that, isn't it? It's about receiving from the cosmos and aligning to our divine frequencies. So in the first part of our meditation, we ask our higher self to take form. Any form it takes. And we draw it into our body and we sit in meditation. I will make a mmm sound so that you can push the button on your apparatus and meditate for as long as you like. And then in the second part of the meditation, we do what we call the practice of radiance, by which we reach up into the cosmos and draw beautiful, pure white light down through the top of our heads, down into the solar plexus, which is the center of the emotional body, to quicken it and laser it out across the planet and back up into the cosmos. And we just keep, and you can do this with your breath, draw it down and laser it out. As you extend it out, you will be extending out your presence and therefore your purpose in life. Another mmm. And then in the third part of our meditation, each week we pick, or someone asks us to pick, a certain theme that would allow for our meditation to be focused on the on the globe, on the, it could be the earth, it could be the people, it could be any situation, but something that allows our meditation to reach out across the ethers. And our meditation in this third part today will be for all of the beings across the planet who feel lonely. You can be alone or feel lonely uh, even in a crowd of people, or you could actually be alone and there is a difference between being alone and being lonely. So we want to send a frequency of light out across the world to support people who do feel lonely to realize that they're not alone, that they have the earth and the sky and, and animals and trees and people that they can access to connect. My higher self always says, whatever you want, give that. And so we want to help lonely people to realize that if they reach out, they will help others not to be lonely, and therefore they will not be lonely themselves. We'll begin with our breath. Close your eyes. Breathe in slowly through your nose. And exhale even more slowly through your mouth. And breathe in through your nose. And exhale slowly. That exhalation slows your brain in a meditative state. Once more, breathe in. And exhale slowly. And now, ask your higher self, it's the intuitive essence of your soul. It's your own inner voice. Ask it to take a form for you. It could be a light or a being, a tree, an animal, an equation. Whatever form comes into your consciousness at this moment, focus on that vibration of your higher self. And ask your higher self to touch the place in your body where you are holding your divine essence at this moment. Just imagine that your higher self is touching some part of your body. And wherever you sense that, just begin to breathe in so that as you breathe in through that point where your higher self is touching you, you're creating an opening an opening that allows for these frequencies of your higher self to enter into your body. And ask your higher self to enter through that touch and now sit in meditation. Um, take a deep 
breath into your body and reach up into the cosmos and draw down a beautiful beam of white light, pure white light, down through the top of your head into your stomach, your solar plexus. And from there, imagine that you're lasering that white light out from you, out across the planet, back into the sky. So breathe in, draw it down, exhale, laser it out across the planet, back into the sky. And just continue to do that. It will quicken your frequency, it will expand your point of reference as yourself in the world. And now, imagine that you could bring all of people, all of humanity, who is sensing a, a feeling or a thought form of aloneness. Bring them into your mind's eye. You can just imagine you're gathering them up. It's a massive group of humanity, of lonely people. And ask them, what frequency of light they need from you to be uplifted, to release the loneliness and to move into situations and opportunities of feeling connected to others, whether that's nature or other humans, other kinds of living beings. Take the first color that pops into your consciousness that they're asking from you. Whatever that color is, again, reach up into the cosmos and pull exactly a beam of that frequency of light down through the top of your head and down into your solar plexus and laser that beam of light, that tone, that color, out to all of the people who feel alone and who are lonely and allow the power of light to uplift them, to bring them smiles, to bring them that magnetism that will create a world of others around them with whom they can connect. So just continue to draw that frequency down, extend it out to them until you feel a shift, until you feel as if all these lonely people are awakening and smiling. And do it now. Take a deep breath into your body and open your eyes. Thank you. And you can do that, especially that third part, as many times as you like, so that you are really seeding an energy into this world that says you are not alone. Don't be lonely. We have a second part to this Sunday meditation. It's called Knowings. And Knowings is an opportunity for people around the world to send in questions of things that are important to their hearts they would like for us to speak about, to uplift all of us. So Alison will give us the questions that have come for this week. The Alison? first question is from Australia. Australia. A question for Chris Griscom. I have a friend who is a famous actor, and there is always someone, somewhere, who is saying something mean about him. And he is a very good person. Will you explain why people do this, trying to kill someone famous? Hmm. You know, it's a human condition to feel that we didn't get the love, we didn't get the recognition, we aren't who we should be, and in a world today where all you have to do is turn on your iPhone, your computer, your television, and you will see these famous people who seem to have everything, everything that perhaps you wish you had. And so what happens there is there is this, this feeling of envy. Why do they get it? Why do they have it? Why are they that way? And I am not. And so we have something that, that we call self-righteousness. And self-righteousness is a very negative pattern through which we attempt 
to bring somebody else down so we can feel better about ourselves. So when you're attacking someone, oh, they're not so good, look what they've done, or look what, what they haven't done, or, or whatever. We attempt to bring them down in our mind's eye so that we don't feel, if we were looking at this totem pole of who's on top and who's on the bottom, that, that we're so underneath them. It never will satisfy us. And the thing that I would say is that whenever you hear somebody um, doing that, ask them in your mind's eye what color they need from you to feel good about themselves. Because that's the only way that they can stop doing that. When they don't have to compare themselves to someone else, but they can say, I like myself. Or I am that I am. The Brazilians have an expression, I am that I am. No better, no worse. And I find it good. And so that's what they need. And you don't have to be a part of that. But recognize that those that do that are those that, that are hardened and hurt inside themselves in their comparison. We don't need a totem pole structure anymore on this planet. We need a wonderful, connecting, multidimensional circle of life. Allison. The second question is from Cornwall, New York, in the USA. Dear Miss Griscom, how can we make goodbyes easier? Hmm. I've had to say goodbye to many friends these past two years due to death and job losses that resulted in relocation. Now, my son, who is in the military, is being stationed in another country. With each goodbye, it does not get easier. I am genuinely at a loss for how to handle goodbyes with a stiff upper lip, which is what men are supposed to do, with deep appreciation for your answer. Let me begin with that last comment. You know, it is true that in many cultures, in Australia, in the United States, and in, in England, in many places, uh, they feel that men are supposed to be carrying on with their stiff, stiff upper lip. Don't do that to yourself. If your heart hurts, express it for you or in front of someone else. It doesn't take away your manliness. Um, we need to be truthful to ourselves. On the other hand, that sorrow and the sadness that we have is not about the other person. It's about ourselves. And that's why we can heal it. I do many uh, ceremonies for the passing of bodies, for death. And one of the things that I always ask the people who are present to do is to think about the quality, the attribute of that person who is no longer there, um, that you most love in them, that you most admire in them. Whatever it is, then imagine that you are taking it into your body. So that if somebody has passed from their life force energy, their legacy continues because you take on those qualities from them. So when you take that quality, maybe their humor, and you feel that it comes into you, something in you will actually become more humorous. I've seen this hundreds of times. It's really true. And then what happens is that you become the template of those qualities that they have. And for your own self, you can realize, I now carry the goodness that I saw in them. And so some part of them lives in me, and I will now do my best to be that template, to carry that. So you polish your own energies in such a way that you carry them. And that's a wonderful way to feel that you can let them go, because they need to go. No one leaves their body, whether it's an accident or uh, a disease and it seems like it's sudden or shouldn't have happened to us but we cannot see the purpose of the soul one thing I am sure of is that however somebody leaves that's a part of their karmic story but that they leave is something that comes from their own higher self their own soul they are done they have finished whatever they have come to learn to to give to work on and they are free 
And so true love is to actually let them go. The same is true for your son. The same is true for anyone who is moving on, so to speak. Uh, and that is to, to really applaud that they're going. And to, whenever you feel, oh, I miss them, immediately bring them into your mind's eye as we were doing in the first part of this meditation and ask them what color they need from you to be happy. And when you are the source, when you draw from the cosmos and it comes through you and you extend it out from them, you will find that your loneliness for them, uh, your uh, sorrow that they have left will dissolve because you will feel that power inside you to allow someone to go on with their lives. And guess what? When they go on with their lives, you go on with yours. And so what I would say is that one of the things that uh, beside these two things that can fill your heart and, and allow you to shift from that place is to look upon yourself and see what you want to polish and to honor that you are here. You are not finished. My higher self says there are no finished products on this planet. We are all still growing and learning and polishing our souls. And so contemplate that. What do you like to do? What brings you joy? What are you good at? Now, all of these things, uh, more meditations, more uh, tuning in to the qualities that you have will help you to realize that although, uh, certainly, for example, with your son, we identify through our families, but it's very much time on this planet to identify through ourselves and then show that to the world. So don't be sad, but allow an enlightened sense of truth to come to you and be your true self. Alison. The last question is from Waterford, Ireland. Ireland. Dear, Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Chris, I love puttering in my greenhouse, oh. gardening away, and especially digging in the dirt. This makes me feel incredibly good and healthy. I thought maybe you could discuss in your knowings this, <laughs> one, this wonderful remedy for being uplifted and that it might help other people too. Oh, yes, I would love to. And of course, Ireland, like us in the northern part of the United States, you have to be in your greenhouse because it's very cold outside. And you can still putter in the, in the earth in some places or the ground is not frozen. But it's lovely to think of you, to imagine you in your greenhouse, putting your hands in the dirt. The reason why children love to make mud pies, they love to, to run in the dirt, to dig their hands in the dirt, which of course you probably, whether you remember it or not, did yourself. I think almost all children do that if they're given a chance to. Because there's, we are made of dirt, by the way. We're made of the minerals, we're made of the uh, mineral kingdom, the earth. And so there's something that connects us to our deepest self when we grow plants, but especially when we touch the earth. When we touch the earth, all of that, you have to be this way, you have to be that way, all of that goes away. And we just find the magic of it. Because again, uh, unless you're one of the rare people that in your astrology, you've mastered Earth, and so you don't have it in your chart, and all the more reason to play with it. But uh, we have this. We have it uh, as, a, as an essence, energy, in our life force. And, and so deeply within us is a love for the Earth, a recognition of the Earth. And one of the things that gardening and playing in the Earth brings to us is to forget uh, all of the constrictions and it has to be this way, especially when we're adults, and to have that wonderment, that magic. Because when you are in the dirt, you're touching something that's, by the way, filled with life. Filled with life. Uh, and, and you're accessing it. And you're making it, you're, you're composing something with it. You're, you're planting a plant in it, or you're moving around. And so you get to have, again, the abandonment, the wonderment of a child. And this is something that is priceless to each and all of us. 
And I want to say that I join you because I love getting my hands into the earth and seeing what happens. So, enjoy your greenhouse and know that you're not alone. So many people around the planet feel the same way. And we do want to whisper to everyone, put your hands in the earth, grow a plant. It doesn't matter if you're in a city, you can pot it in a pot and watch it grow. And it will make you happy. And happiness is, after all, what we all need to allow ourselves in these great times of changes. Happiness is a great healer.